not to be outdone by the bullies of Russia and China. Iran stirring up trouble. The hell is going on over there? The Islamic Republic yesterday claimed responsibility for a missile attack near the U.S. consulate in Iraq, saying they were targeting Israelis in the area. But this little outburst of aggression comes as the U.S. is in the middle of a nuclear deal negotiation with Iran that Russia is now attempting to both mediate and disrupt. So is the United States getting all walked over? And is the Iran nuclear mess just a big international joke? Here with me now, Libertarian Institute Director and Editorial Director of Antiwar.com, Scott Horton. Scott, welcome back. Thank you, Kennedy. Good to be with you. So do we really need the Iran nuclear deal? Do we need it? It was bad in the first place. Uh, there's been a lot of time since it was first. It wasn't a treaty, so it wasn't ratified, but agreed to. And now, so do we still need the JCPOA? And that's the good news. We don't even need it. The whole thing is really superfluous. I mean, Obama was really trying to do the right thing by putting the fake alleged issue of Iran's nuclear weapons program to bed essentially by doubling the inspections regime that they already had. Iran has been a member of the Non-Proliferation Treaty all along and they have a safeguards agreement with the IAEA. They've been verified all along, Kennedy, to not have diverted their enriched uranium to military purposes. We've been hearing uh, the accusers in Israel and America say that Iran is making nuclear weapons for 25 years now. They don't have a single one yet because that's actually not true. And so we could really just forget the JCPOA. At the same time, though, we should just drop all the sanctions and normalize relations with Iran. You know, the Iranian Revolution of 79, that was 40 years ago, more. Mm -hmm. And Ronald Reagan sold the missiles through Israel right after that, just a couple years later. So we ought to be able to get along with the Ayatollah's regime and normalize relations. And then that way, they don't even have an incentive to want to make nuclear weapons because we're all moving forward together as friends. Yeah, but they're not friends with the Saudis. So, you know, their claim is uh, we need this. And in, in order to be dominant in our part of the world, uh, we need a nuclear weapon. So it's, it's one thing to say, yes, it would be great but to have. the thing is. Yes. Well, sorry, but just the reason they're dominant there is because George W. Bush handed them Baghdad. And Barack Obama's dirty war in Syria ended up making the Syrian government more dependent on Iran than ever before. And so every time we try to spite the Iranians, our government, all we do is end up making them more powerful and including also our, um, our uh, shared al-Qaeda enemies more powerful at the same time as well. And in fact, you know, when Biden was just hinting, not truly backing off, but was hinting at backing off support for the Saudis, mm -hmm. the Saudis sent people to Baghdad to negotiate with the Iranians. And the UAE has begun to send their ambassadors to negotiate with the Iranians. Because when America is not backing them up, like the Federal Reserve promising to bail out a bank, when we're not standing behind them promising to guarantee everything that they do, they have more of an incentive to deal with the Iranians rather than to ramp up tensions. All right, so I, I want to shift just for a minute to uh, Ukraine. Does the Biden administration want a war with Russia? That seems insane. I know. And frankly, I think this is why I got it wrong back a couple weeks ago when I told you I didn't think there was going to be a war is, as I said, um, I thought that William Burns, the head of the CIA, who had told uh, Condoleezza Rice in 2008, yet means yet on bringing Ukraine into NATO and the rest of this policy, I thought that he would guide Biden through this to some kind of peaceful resolution. But I should have been more cynical. And now that I've gone back, Kennedy, you can find articles in the Washington Post, especially David Ignatius, but there's a few of them, four or five of them, New York Times, Foreign Affairs Journal, Yahoo News, and so many others, where these Democrats are openly saying, we want to give them another Afghanistan like we did under Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. As Hillary Clinton said on MSNBC, yeah, there were some unintended consequences from that, you know, like the 30-year terror war, two million dead, and all of the consequences, uh, 10 trillion spent, and the whole terror war era as the unintended consequences of the 80s. But yeah, that's what we want to do. We want to do that. That again God. in Ukraine. These people want to prolong the war, Kennedy, as they put it, just like back in the old days, to bleed Russia. And the thing is, that's just insane. All this stuff, and pardon me, at the top of your show about let us stand with these brave Ukrainians and arm them up, that is just getting them into a fight that they cannot win. 
And as the CIA know, man, wrote the about Russian, the last the time they did this stay behind program. Very lackluster. If someone invaded me, you well, bet your ass I'd be, be taking true. aim at him. You bet your ass I would be there Maybe, but Kennedy, on, on the rooftops Kennedy, shooting at those mother truckers. Uh, anyone who dares here's try. Here's the problem, though. And, and we I, don't, have, I don't trust Russia. I don't buy the pro-Russian propaganda. I was talking to a friend of mine this no, weekend. No, you shouldn't, but... Go ahead. But, Kennedy... Each side has 6,000 hydrogen bombs. You yeah. understand? This is not like picking a fight with the Pashtuns in Paktika oh, province. Oh, believe me. I okay? don't think we should this be in is, a hot war so with Russia we should be, at all. I don't think we should have a no-fly zone. Our government zone. should be in Geneva. Yeah. Our government, our, Anthony Blinken, Anthony Blinken, our Secretary of State, should be in Geneva right now with Sergei Lavrov, hamming out, hammering out some kind of peaceful resolution to this crisis. All this brinksmanship and tough guy talk yeah. and sending in more arms, it feels great. But you know what, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, they did the same kind of pressure campaign mm -hmm. to get us into war with Iraq on the pretext that they were preempting an attack by Saddam and Osama against yeah. us. We cannot let this kind of war fever no, take because, us you over. Know what, I, I Lincoln agree with should you. be on a plane to I Geneva or he completely. should resign. This is the kind of thing that could go on for another 20 or 30 years. And uh, frankly, I, I will not put up with this government creating more wounded veterans in the name of what no one can outline that properly scott horton thank you so much for your time appreciate it All right. thank you kennedy thank, thank you. you i don't agree with you on everything but you are really smart